Tervitus, Tamid ja Ära Tsiitvolt ka. Me oleme siin Vintave Studio ja meil on külla tulnud te festivali süda ja Euroopa pokkeri hing võibolla võiks nimade lausa öelda Franke esiklikult ja intervju kvaliteedi huvides me peame selle inglise keeles nii et võibolla me paneme tekitame siia mingid subtiitrid kalla kui me eriti ägedad olema aga mina ütlen et minge kooli õppige inglise keel selgeks ja siis ei ole neid isegi vaja uh, Franke welcome i Thank just uh, introduced you as uh, the heart of uh, the festival and the soul of european poker uh, <laughs> it's it's great Big to one. see you how's life life is good Should life is complain. good uh, tell us a little bit uh, take us behind the scenes what it takes to bring the festival together uh, what uh, yeah what preparations do you need to do and how long does it take to wow. for the whole event to start well it's, it's a big machine uh, a of course you need to sort the location somewhere in europe you need to agree with the casino you need to sort all the necessary hotels you need to sort the hospitality package restaurants you need to sort activities for the players off the felt because we are quite strongly you know have smaller buy-ins 125 250 so that you can go on vacation, you don't have to be at casino every day, you should, should have fun too. So we have this hospitality package. So there's a lot of preps there, then of course there's a lot of marketing. So we have web page, social media. We push out a lot uh, in the purpose to get people to qualify online. So we work with many, many partners, including Coolbet. And now we have a show uh, together with Win TV, which is also a partner. Yeah, that's part of that, uh, yeah, exactly. isn't it? Yeah. So, so to win... To win a package that includes buy-ins, hotels, in this case, is Hand on Mob, which is a fantastic tournament. I mean, massive amount of players and, and uh, quite nice buy-in, 250 euros. 250, all right. And uh, tell us a little bit about the hospitality package. That's definitely one of the things that uh, separates the festival from maybe some of the other poker tours uh, out there, just because uh, of uh, the emphasis of uh, for the fun that Correct. players should have there. Uh, where did the idea come from and uh, what's usually included? Yeah, so I mean, uh, I've been on the poker tours, visiting a lot of different stops and, and of course you play a lot of poker, but you would like to have something organized on the side. And you can always do it yourself, but it's a bit easier if someone organized the go-kart or the uh, sailing boat or beach going or pool tournament, whatever it could be, or dinners or beer tasting or wine tasting. It could be whatever activity, but you get people together people that maybe don't know each other before. There is someone from Hungary, someone from Estonia, someone from Spain. And maybe they become friends and have a greater time at the, at the stop. So for example, in this package just now, the top price in one of the uh, satellites includes then the hospitality. It's worth 200 euros, you have an activity every day, but uh, you need to win it online. You can't just show up and say, oh, I want to do these activities. No, qualify online, qualify at Coolbet. Uh, for sure. I think it's even worth uh, a bit more than 200 just because someone else is doing all these things <laughs> for you and you just uh, get to like actually feel like you're in a vacation while yeah. playing poker uh, thanks to those uh, activities. Do you have um, like a dream destination for the festival where you haven't been just yet or that's uh, something uh, that's in the works maybe? Yeah, so, so we are negotiating with, with a location where no one has been yet. I mean no one really. Really? Yes, it's still uh, you know, th <laughs> three hour travel from Estonia or something, it's, or four hour, three hour. It's very doable, but it's, it's, it's not sorted yet. So I can't say anything, it, it can fall through, so I don't want to say it. Uh, but we always have good stops in, in Malta, in, in uh, Bratislava, and now we added in Rosvadov, which is very casino centric, like poker centric. But when you have what we then do, which is the hospitality, we have so many fun things outside, it's also a great stop even though it's a village you know it sounds exciting mm -hmm. sounds very exciting uh, uh, on that topic uh, out of all the places the festival has been to uh, do you have like a um, favorite place that you're always longing to go back to and uh, you're hoping that will forever stay on the festival schedule Yes, of course. Everywhere where I can drink good tea. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. Tea? Oh, wait, 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 wait. I was, so, I was so ready for this sentence to finish somewhere else. Good tea. Describe a good tea for me. Uh, I'm, I'm not a big tea, tea drinker. Uh, sell, me, sell me on that idea. What's a good tea? So, so a good tea is usually from Pilsen re region. You yeah. can't really promote tea drinking <laughs> with the real world. Uh, so we call it drinking tea because, you know, big gambler wear. 
Pils, Pilsen tea is good. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. You got me. You got me there for a, a second. Uh, all right, you're like a one-man machine. Uh, where, yeah. where did you even get this idea? You know, organizing a poker tournament or festival, uh, nevertheless, it's, it, it's a huge deal and usually reserved yeah. for big casinos that uh, have uh, tens and or even hundreds of people on their staff. Did it sound crazy to you when it came to you? And how did it come to you? So I, I've been organizing poker events since 2004. Mm -hmm. So I did Poker in Camp and Nordic Aces. I worked a long time with the casino locally here in Estonia, sending Swedes and Finns and also local Estonians. And it grew quite good with different events, but never really scaled up. It was very Nordic-centric, Estonia-centric. Then somehow I launched something called Cash Game Festival and started to travel on the Europe scene. It was very 100% cash games. A great event series, really fun, but it was hard for operators, let's say cool bet, to qualify players because usually the way to qualify is through tournaments and then someone comes to a stop and there's no tournament, there's only cash games. So it was a bit of a hard, hard, hard nut to crack and then came COVID, I thought a bit more and then I created the festival, which finally then includes tournaments in roulette, blackjack, sportsbook, slots, mm -hmm. a lot of mixed games because I, I prefer more than two cards in the hand. And he just bombarded with you know, 50 plus events, cash game challenge, and a lot of hospitality. So the idea is crazy, but like, I'm not alone. I have people working with me. I mean, we have a great team internal, but then equally important is like media partners or community partners like Win TV. What you do to make the festival is equal important as what I do or my team works, because you are reaching so many people with a positive message saying, ah, we are going there. This will be fun. And of course, there are other media partners like that, but that's mm. the only way for me to succeed. And if you think about Coolbet, Coolbet is very grateful that we together now are getting more Estonians to Bratislava. I mean, it will be a great stop. Definitely. And talking about Coolbet, uh, well, uh, throughout this uh, series that we're having with our viewers, we expect quite a few people uh, to go to these festivals for the first time. Mm -hmm. Is there any like recommendations or uh, anything you can t uh, tell them what to prepare for and uh, how to prepare, I don't know, mentally or, uh, or whatever is it? What, what should they expect? Yeah, I think that the most important is have fun. Like, you don't have to play poker all the time. View the city. See something new they haven't seen. Um... Do you think you're approachable? Can they come say it? Of hey, course. I want the, uh, want the package, Frank. Of course, uh, Thank Easy. you so much. <laughs> Easy. And, and I mean, I think that's what makes the festival difference is that we actually talk uh, between tournaments or during tournaments. We talk about gambler where don't gamble for money you can't afford to lose. So don't put in more money than you have for the entertainment poker or mm -hmm. casino or whatever games you want to play. Uh, and then we are pushing quite hard like it's just a game. Don't take it so serious. Don't put on your glasses and hoodie. Talk with your neighbor, drink some tea, and laugh when you win, laugh when you lose, but laugh with, a, with heart, you know, be happy. So it's entertainment. Obviously, uh, th that is a great message to send out there. And, uh, and it's very, uh, I would like to say as well from my part that it's understandable to feel um, disappointed if you bust out. Mm -hmm. But at, in the end of the day, as you say, it's just a game. It's just a yeah, game. And there's plenty more to come if, uh, if you put Correct. your heart and soul And this it. is the thing with the festival. I mean, daily we have seven, seven to ten different tournaments. You bust the 125, well, if you have another 125 to spare, buy into the next tournament. It's not the end of the world. Compared with events where buy-in is 1,000 euros, yeah, it's a lot of money for everyone. It's mm -hmm. a lot of money. So it's very hard to play relaxed. 125, 250. Most people can see that as a movie ticket or something similar. Okay, a bit more expensive movie ticket, but still it should be seen as entertainment. Absolutely. Uh, was it uh, a great success right from the start, uh, beginning with the festival? and uh, Or uh, did you, um, I don't know, uh, have any hardships? We have. In the we, beginning? We, we, uh, we kicked it off and uh, booked hotel and everything and then COVID closed the first event. So we cancelled the first. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, uh, it, it, it's quite a mountain to climb in that sense that when, the very, very first event that you're uh, starting, uh, you had to cancel. Did yeah. you feel like quitting or did you know that no, what you're doing is... Uh, it, it will be good, we thought. And then we did the second event or then what became the first. And then uh, Europe had opened up and then comes the second close down. So. When we did the event for the second COVID close down, then all of Europe basically was red, except 
all of a sudden Slovakia, Bratislava. Because the Pope was visiting Bratislava the day before the festival. And that was such a big event, so I don't know who political sorted that, but, but Slovakia was green on the COVID map. <laughs> So people could travel there f- f- uh, freely. The day after the Pope left was the day when the festival started. Then all of a sudden it was yellow. A week later, uh, the festival was red, or uh, Slovakia was red. So we made the event with a one week's margin thanks to uh, intervention from, from above. I don't believe, but uh, you know. Well, it, it could have been. Let's talk about you uh, a little bit, because um, most of our viewers who uh, are familiar with you, yeah. first of all, how they know you is Thanks to your laugh. Yeah. <laughs> you you yeah. can hear that laugh throughout big <laughs> festivals or tournaments anywhere. And you know, always know that Frank is in the building. But uh, what brought you to poker? How, how long have you even been playing? And uh, how did you start? Wow, I, I started to play as a kid in school. I played with my parents. Uh, actually, in school, we played for money quite early. Yeah. Maybe it was candy first, but it was money early. And <laughs> even the teacher caught us with the black book. And, then uh, <laughs> I think I started to do some other events with sport and competition, and then we started a poker tournament. But the poker boom, and, and when I moved to Finland, and then first go to a live casino, that's, I think, that woke me up. And in the beginning, I was uh, at Ray Casino, the state casino in, in Helsinki, and I played with, like, Joa Helpi, Ilari Sahamies, uh, whatever. Like, the, Crazy the, best, the best of the best still. Mm-hmm. And I was the ATM deluxe, you know? Yeah. I was working at Nokia, making a bit of money, so it was a pastime activity, I had fun. But I came into the casino for maybe one, two years, and everyone, oh, Martin, come, come, sit with us. I didn't understand I was a fish, you know? <laughs> oh, they're, they're, they're so friendly, friendly here. Oh, 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 this is great. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I mean, they, these are great people. <laughs> they yeah, make yeah, the yeah. fish feel good yeah, if, yeah. Uh, if it's your uh, liveliness. Yeah. Uh, but what about Estonia? What uh, connected you with Estonia and, uh, and uh, what made you stay? Yeah, so, so basically I'm an entrepreneur and, and I fell to some hardships in Helsinki around 2008, 7, 8 when the financial crisis was. And, and basically the company we ran did not produce enough money to, to live in Finland because there I think my rent for apartment was 3,000 euros a month. I realized I could rent a 750 apartment very, very nice in Tallinn and commute. So I took Linda Line, lived in Tallinn and, and took Linda Line to Finland and still ran the company. And eventually I realized, why do I even care about Finland? And then I stayed in Estonia. And uh, of course I care about Finland. I have kids there, etc. And a lot of friends. But like from a living perspective, I can do everything here. And I've done business in Estonia since 2005. So I've done events here for, for soon 20 years. I'm not Estonian. I'm permanent resident, so I feel like Estonian. Yeah. But I can still only say, Surkov Pimaga Aita. <laughs> Which is bad, but it's also very positive for you Estonians. Like, you speak English very, very good. Keep well, it up. You understand Estonian quite well. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure uh, whenever people uh, speak Estonian uh, next to you, you, you kind of pick, uh, pick up yeah. what we're <laughs> talking about. But it, it, let it be a secret. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, in your opinion, the, we, we, what, what we try to do here in Wind uh, TV and uh, what's my personal mission in my life, I feel like, is, um, is um, bring more people to this poker community because I think it's a great community and it's given a lot to my life personally. Um, if you could name one thing that you've taken away from this life of poker, uh, what's the best thing that's come out of it? For sure, you have a chance to sit with six, eight other people from all walks of life, whatever gender, whatever nationality, and you have a common hobby, something you enjoy, so you can talk, you can get to know. Maybe one guy will then, will in the end, a girl, uh, be your plumber. Another person might be the travel buddy for your trip to Argentina. Maybe one is importing wines, someone is fixing cars. I mean, you meet so many interesting people. Of course, here and there a douchebag, yeah. but with a bit of tea, everyone is nice. I mean, uh, even with uh, with a douchebag, you still have something in common, yeah. uh, which you uh, otherwise wouldn't have. And you you, you, uh, you find a common ground. Uh, beautiful answer, Frank. Uh, yeah. What's in the future for uh, the festival? Uh, are you expanding still, or yeah. are you happy where you are uh, at the moment? At the moment, I'm, I might take uh, myself a two-month travel in the beginning of the year, so I might only do three stops again next year. I haven't decided yet, but it might be four. If it's four, it's a bit more work. If it's three, I can relax a bit. But at least by 2026, we will have uh, four stops a year. So it's like 
consistent. And then um, let's see what we, we have the festival online. I've done it a few times. We had 1.5 million euros in guarantees uh, this summer. Wild. Yeah. Wild. Yeah. Absolutely and, massive. And, and we got total of 1.9 million. I have been... Uh, it's insane. Like I, little it, Frankie it is, from Estonia is doing it. It's it, insane. It is <laughs> insane. And I've, I've been following since the start and the, the way the live event has been growing at yeah. becoming one of the biggest uh, tours in uh, Europe. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and the online event, it's, it's, it's been just heartwarming to see. And uh, I've been rooting for that, and it's 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 great that we can do this uh, yes. right now. How many more years of uh, the festival do you think? I, I, I will run it another thirty years. You will run it another thirty years. I'm quite sure. I I am young. I yeah. am eighteen now. So, yeah. so I will stop when I'm forty-eight, <laughs> just before I come fifty. You know. <laughs> Sounds good. So you have a little bit uh, more time to yes. uh, take out. Franke, thank you for joining us. Thank uh, you. It's it's always a pleasure to see you. And uh, inimesed, kui te näete Franke, et võita tale julgelt, kas või eesti keeles tere minna ütlema, või inglise keeles uh, ja edu teile kõikidele turniiril. Franke, I know you're a busy man. You have a lot to do before the festival begins. So I will let you go and see you, you soon. You are a rock star. <laughs>